how a radioactive cloud could spread across the Pacific. As the U.S. <clears throat> Trump and North Korea <clears throat> Kim continue with their playground antics, the consequences could be dead serious for the world. A new graphic shows the effects an atmospheric burst would have if North Korea were to carry out a nuclear test over the Pacific Ocean. The head of the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty Organization posted the simulation of the radioactive cloud spreading for two weeks across the ocean towards Asia and the U.S. The graphic did not include any supporting data such as nuclear payload or the height of detonation. Experts say the explosion, fire and radiation created from a hydrogen bomb test over the Pacific Ocean could have catastrophic effects. Aquatic life in the immediate blast zone would be killed instantly, while radioactive isotopes, with the help of wind, could impact other organisms and humans thousands of miles away. Love the North? Keep watching. How would the U.S. military fight North Korea? As tensions continue to mount on the Korean Peninsula with no side backing down, the U.S. has threatened a massive military response to any potential North Korean nuclear attack. But what would that look like? The U.S. would likely deploy large groups of its Navy and Air Force to Japan, Okinawa, and Guam to bolster military presence there. A Stratfor analyst told Business Insider that they'd also possibly maneuver submarines and ships closer to the north and target nuclear facilities through airstrikes. Helicopter-deployed buoys would listen for North Korean submarines, which could then be destroyed by more advanced American underwater craft. Experts reckon the U.S. would not invade, but rather defend South Korea as the North Korean army charges the border. This scenario would also see U.S. Special Forces parachuting into strategic locations around Pyongyang for surgical strikes. If, in the extremely unlikely scenario, North Korea strikes Guam or another U.S. territory or ally with a nuclear strike, the U.S. has the option to respond via land, sea, or air. Most agree that the resulting American retaliation would lay waste to Pyongyang and kill thousands, if not millions. Or, you know, Kim Jong-un and Donald Trump could just simply step into the octagon and see what happens. How easily can the U.S. declare nuclear war? U.S. President Donald Trump says the U.S.'s nuclear arsenal is far stronger and more powerful than ever before, after warning North Korea that their provocations would be met with fire and fury. Amid the escalating tensions between the U.S. and North Korea, some have expressed concern over whether a war, specifically nuclear war, is imminent, and how easily the U.S. president could make that happen. The U.S. Constitution gives Congress the power to declare wars and authorize funds to support them. The president would normally appeal to Congress for authorization if he wants to declare a war. However, the president also has temporary authority to use force for up to 60 days without congressional approval. Even though the decision cannot be opposed, Congress can choose to cut funding if it believes the military engagement is not in the best interest of the country. Under international law, the U.S. may only use military force against another sovereign state if it faces an imminent, unprovoked, and certain threat. The U.S. may use force in anticipation of that attack, but it cannot declare war based on potential threats. Or the U.S. could declare war after receiving authorization from the U.N. Security Council, in which it serves as a permanent member. However, other permanent members, such as China and Russia, could use their veto power to prevent the U.S. from taking action. The U.S. and North Korea came very close to war in 1994, after Pyongyang announced its intention to withdraw from the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. The crisis was reportedly resolved after a top-level diplomatic meeting of former U.S. President Jimmy Carter and former DPRK leader Kim Il-sung. North Korea's Military Might With tensions ramping up on the Korean Peninsula, perhaps it's time to assess just exactly what kind of heat Kim Jong-un is packing. According to The Telegraph, North Korea is believed to have more than a thousand missiles of varying ranges. North Korea's short- and long-range missiles can strike South Korea and Japan. Washington says Pyongyang is also developing a missile that will be capable of reaching the continental United States. North Korea is estimated to have enough plutonium to build as many as six nuclear bombs. Experts say it will take North Korea up to 10 years to fit a nuclear warhead to a missile capable of reaching the U.S. North Korea is believed to be able to make most kinds of chemical weapons. South Korea says the DPRK also has biological weapons, but it is unclear if they are ready for the battlefield. 
Military service is mandatory in North Korea for men and women, and the army has more than a million troops. The army relies on outdated Soviet tanks. The navy has more than 70 submarines and three frigates. Most North Korean Air Force planes are outdated Chinese fighter jets, although it does have a small number of more modern Russian-built jets. The cyber warfare threat from North Korea is centered around an organization called Bureau 121, which boasts up to 6,000 hackers. Most of its attacks are targeted at South Korea. So that's the kind of hardware Kim Jong-un has at his fingertips. Let's just hope he brings an end to all this military madness before people get hurt. Everything you need to know about North Korea's latest nuclear test. North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un took a break from not pooping at the weekend to make some boom boom. Big boom boom. On Sunday, September 3rd, North Korea conducted its sixth and most powerful nuclear test at the underground Punguri nuclear test facility. According to the U.S. Geological Survey, the underground explosion resulted in a 6.3 magnitude earthquake. Estimates put its explosive yield at 120 kilotons. For comparison, the little boy bomb dropped on Hiroshima in 1945 had a yield of 15 kilotons. The recent North Korean test was eight times stronger than that. But it's just over a third of the power of the recently tested U.S. remote-controlled nuclear bomb, the B-61-12. That holds a maximum yield of 340 kilotons. Meet the Castle Bravo. This had an explosive yield of 15,000 kilotons when it was tested in 1954. It's the most powerful American bomb to ever be tested, but it's not the strongest. This is the Tsar Bomba. This Soviet super nuke was tested in 1961 and had a blast yield of 50,000 kilotons. That's 400 times stronger than North Korea's latest test. But don't think that makes the North any less dangerous, because turning a test bomb into a deliverable nuclear payload is quite the challenge, and it looks like the North might already be there. There is speculation this weekend's test bomb will form the warhead component of the Hwasong-14, North Korea's intercontinental ballistic missile. This ICBM can reportedly hit Alaska. Over the weekend, the United States threatened a massive military response against the use of such a weapon against the U.S. or its allies. Interestingly, President Trump is considering stopping trade with any country that does business with North Korea, aka China, because without the People's Republic's support, the North Korean regime would collapse.